Do you think that all wines from Australia generally just kind of taste the same? Like we've got our really big, rich, heavy extracted Shirazes, we have our like oaky Chardonnays, and as you guys may have already known, we actually have some really amazing Cabernets and amazing Rieslings, but most people aren't really aware about how different the soils are, how different the exposures are, and how different everything is when we move entire different regions. So to prove it, we have a challenge that has been set for us from Different Drop. We have six wines, we are gonna blind taste them and they all come from one region. So we're gonna to try to determine what region that is uh, and tell you why we think it based purely from the flavor of the wine. Check it out. Uh, pale lemon, white wine. Oh, yum. Ripe, textural, got a sulfury, waxy thing. Pretty saline, pretty lemony. You're gonna be surprised to learn this, but my brain instantly isn't telling me exactly where this wine's from. We're gonna to have to taste a few more of them before we land on that. Um, um, pretty good, fun, interesting. Oh, lovely texture, white wine. Love that texture, ripe, broad, salty. I reckon it's Fiano. I'm calling it Fiano. It's not bad though, a bit too citrusy for me. I'll have, I'll have three bottles of that. I'll pay $32. But I would happily drop 28 bucks a bottle and I would buy, I'd buy six to six to 12 really. It's, it's one of those like, it's like a, an easy drinking white wine. So you probably can, can get through a fair bit, but I'm gonna say six. I would buy six of these just because um, there's just not that like, you are this variety shouting at $35. Yeah, I've got a lot of Fiano already and I love it. It's one of my favorite grape varieties going around, but um, this is just like, you know, a classic Australian style Fiano, which is just textural, refreshing, simple, delicious. I think it's a little Pinot Gris or a Grigio. I can't remember which one masculine or which one feminine. <sighs> there is something about this wine though. I think it's very, very young, very, very yummy. I don't think it can get to the heights of what the variety can get to because it can get to some really high highs, but this is just an easy drinking afternoon expression. So easy breezy, delicious. <laughs> One number two, a bit darker, a bit hazier. It smells like Chardonnay. Oh, and it smells like natural Chardonnay. It's a little bit of a mouse in the house on this one. I reckon this is gonna be foul. Very, very strong here. Beautiful salinity to this. Could be uh, a telltale uh, thing from where this wine actually comes from. Lovely wine, really well balanced, really good texture. Again, really similar fruit pro profile to the last wine. Really salty again, but that lovely kind of stone fruit ripeness, that great kind of nutty, yeah. mealy texture. Yeah, something a little bit funky going on there. And it's getting a little bit funkier as it sits in my mouth. I'll have one bottle of that. I reckon it's gonna be $38. Natty little mouse boy. It's got, yeah, but it's got a little bit of character to it as well. That waxiness is really delicious. Interesting variety, not too sure, but I love that waxy, oily vibe. Um, I'm gonna get six, I'm happy with that. I'm gonna go pay 30 bucks for it. Natty little mouse boy. But like Stuart Little, not like, I know Ratatouille's rats, but there's a lot more rodents in that film than there are in Stuart Little. There's only the one. Imagine not getting adopted, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I am pretty impressed with it. Uh, I'd probably drop around about 30 bucks a bottle and I would buy, again, six to 12. Not, not too sort of crazy out there that I need to run out and grab this but really impressed with the elegance here, really impressed with sort of how subdued a lot of those characters are becoming. I think this is the norm for orange wine from Australia at the moment. At the moment, my, my brain is off in McLaren Vale. That can get in. Um, I reckon that can be a really good wine to have around quite regularly. I think it's just got enough complexity, enough texture. Real good, real, real good. Big fan. So again, shock, haven't figured out the region yet. All right, it's just like it's seen a bit of skin contact, a little bit more orange. Smells like an orange wine style, and this one's actually really like quiet. There's, there's a slight hint of reduction here, but it actually forms into the aroma, really sort of envelops into the aroma really, really well. Sort of sharpening it up and just giving it like a little bit of punch and a little bit of drive. Love the tannin here. Love that fruit profile as well. Really nice and ripe again. Yellow peaches. Definitely more skins, more of that orange style, more apricot. I like it more than the previous wine, which is interesting because generally speaking, the more orange things get, the more funky they get, but that is not the case with this one. A little bit more of an aromatic uh, style, like definitely a textual, yummier, uh, not really sort of crunchy, just broad, maybe like a Viognier or a Vidello. Yeah, I really like this. I'm going 12 here. It's probably my favorite wine so far. Uh, again, it's orange wine, so it's really challenging to kind of guess variety, but I love the acid to it. And the acid tannin profile I think is really awesome. But yeah, I'm a big fan of what's going on here. But yeah, super delicious. Uh, I'm gonna go magic number here, 38. See what we got. Surely it's coming up, surely it's coming up. Greco, all that sort of stuff. That feels like $38 as well because it's skin contact. And not my favorite lineup so far, but we're about to get into the reds, so hopefully things pick up. At the moment, get my head still either, without understanding the reds yet, which we'll get into, my head's still sort of in McLaren Vale. Not really the Barossa. The reds will tell all. <laughs> Light red juicy fruits. 
Not a bad way to start out. It does have a little bit of a brown tinge to it. Could be a natty thing as well. Maybe these are all a little bit natural. Lovely Pinot. Again, this is of that, I want to say it's more natural, but it's not, uh, I guess, in the, the modern day or contemporary sense of our understanding of natural. This theme's a little bit more tailored, like a winemaker that actually knows what they're doing has sort of upgraded their way of making wine. And Lovely acid, lovely fruit profile, love that tannin. Kind of like sour, but kind of a funky palette to it, but it is Pinot-esque, but it's not Pinot. It's a bit ripe. Um, yeah, apple juice. A little bit acidic, a little bit bright, a little bit tannic. Um, yeah, that's really, it's really nice wine. Yeah, I'm, I'm now sort of starting to move towards the hills. Um, maybe, maybe kind of edgier versions of Margaret River. I'm not really going for just like nailing varieties here, but this is definitely leading me down the Riverland path. I think there's a lot of manipulation to kind of make these wines approachable, which I think is really a good thing. It kind of is, we've got these really amazing fertile soils and no native varieties. It's like far out, you can make it a play, play thing and kind of express the terror are in a different way rather than like there's no regional styles to <laughs> no that's stupid because the number of bottles i buy is how much i like it not the dollars fuck that 50. my heart says that is cheap my heart says that's a 24 dollar bottle of wine and that's what i'm gonna go with <laughs> One number five, a little bit darker, a little bit denser. Oh yeah, lovely, a bit riper. Decent amount of like confection here. Five, medium bodied red wine, lovely kind of juicy red, you know, medium ruby, nothing. No, again, this is just red wine that we see a lot on the show. It's really bright Pinot like flavor, but the nose just, nose is much more savory and herbaceous than the palate's presenting. Mm, luscious, full bodied. I think it's Syrah, amazing Syrah. Uh, a little bit lower acid, that's sort of tailoring off. Reminds me of Murdoch Hill. Lovely tannin though. Lovely juicy, medium bodied fruit. Again, this is, yeah, again, really playful. We've gone 30 bucks. 30 bucks here pretty comfortably. Do I have six of those? No, I hate it when I do this, which is why I love doing it. How much booze is in it? I don't know, man. He's just anti the whole legs thing, which is funny. Um, <laughs> fuck it. Grenache. I just, I'm not sort of jumping at this like I would um, maybe like other more sort of edgier styles that are like pushing boundaries and taking a few more risks. Weekend staple. Feels like a blend. I'm gonna go like a GSM kind of thing. It's just, yeah. It's not particularly varietal. It's just a good kind of easy drinking wine. Love the tannin, love the juiciness, love the approachability. Medium everything, Goldilocks, bang. Outside of South Australia, really? Not even Beechworth, not Orange, not Tasmania. I'm, I'm in my head, I'm the hills. <laughs> One number six, the darkest, densest little fella of the whole lot. Syrah, like straight up and down, amazing Syrah. And in fact, this tastes like a younger version of the Syrah that we had from the different drop cellar tasting. Oh wow, got a bit of a minty current thing going on. Far out, this is really challenging. Oh, it's really cool. It makes me think of Christmas for some reason. I reckon this is a smaller wine producing region that we're drinking this from. That's weird, but I like it. I mean, fuck. You wouldn't put them in the order of weight, so it wouldn't go Gamay Grenache. Raz. Yeah, wow, cracker. Uh, I think we're in Adelaide Hills and I would happily drop another 42, bottles of, 42 bucks a bottle for it. Mm. There's a bit of a banana skin got thing going on here. Someone's kind of leaned back on the self use. It would have been ideal if they had a bit more, but it's stemmy and savory and the tannins are really ripe and full. It is approachable and easy drinking. I don't know, man. I reckon these are from the Mornington Peninsula. That's my guess. Mornington, I don't know why, but I haven't had a lot of wines from the Morning Peninsula. Mornington potential and I haven't had a lot of wines that taste like this so that's sort of my rationale. I think it's a bit of a, I'm a little bit worried calling that because we are in the Adelaide Hills and I think we might have even done an Adelaide Hills tasting uh, like in the last 12 months or so. Uh, there's a great deal of other things that grow really well there. But, like I've seen some really excellent Vermentinos and a few other different things like you know some really fun Montepulcianos and Negro Maros and things of that nature. There's some really great wines you can get out of there. It's coming clutch, it's kind of sour, it's kind of fruity, it's not very tannic. I actually have no idea. I'm not even going to guess variety. Let's see what the boys think though. All right, uh, we are talking about Australian region. We needed to pick a region. How did you guys go? Uh, yeah, pretty good. This is the uh, definition of just like Wednesday night quaffers all across the board. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. I nailed it. It's the morning from the peninsula. You're welcome. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll be honest though, like picking picking the actual region I found kind of difficult because of the variability of like mm -hmm. what's been what's been shown. Like I was expecting like a really clear sort of an aromatic wine, like a Riesling or mm. something or like something oaky. There's no, really there's, no there's no definer. There's no one where it's like, oh, it, this could only come from from there. Yeah. yeah. There's nothing that's like stands out. And that and to be honest, that almost like morphs it into something that you can identify. Henry's gone Mornington. What are you going? Hills, Adelaide Hills. Fucking Dude, wow. what? No yeah. way. Alright, I've gone Riverland. That, that makes impressive. sense. <laughs> that makes sense. If that's Riverland, I'm so impressed with at least one yeah. one two of these wines I'm amazed with. 
All right, well, let's get into it. Wine number one, uh, yum. Yeah, yeah, pretty good, pretty good. It was like a lot of these are like this, like six baggers for me. They were like six of this, six of this. I don't, I can't, I don't love it so much. I want lots of it. Mm. This, this was like that perfect. Um, thought potentially a Fiano, oh, a little bit, yeah, a little bit muted, a little bit closed on the nose, but really lovely texture. Little, lovely. little, little, little sulfury hit. Mm. I don't, I'm not too mad about that. It's just bound to the wine really well. Great, mm. great texture. Love that flavor. But uh, I got, I'm, I'm not dying for Fiano. Yeah. To be honest, right no. now, I've got plenty of it. Yeah. <laughs> Too much of it. I have a Fiona problem. Yeah. Um, not like I'm addicted to it. You I, can I, solve it. Go to yeah, yeah, yeah. www.unicozilla.com.au. <laughs> solve our Fiona problem now. One of three bottles. I thought it was really good. 35 bucks. Uh, 28 bucks and six. Three for 32. I thought it was a bit salty for me. Barossa! Bon Blanc! Damn. Fuck, New man. school Barossa right here. Uh, and from the goat, Pete Shell, like, you know, one of the absolute stalwarts of the new Barossa. Mm, 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 I knew, mm. I did say fucking Chenin Blanc in the taste. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, but it's not oaky enough and it's not like, wow. yeah, fuck, that's good. Hey, look, I do love the comparison, though, of like Fiano and Chenin. Yeah. Though, like, that is, there is like, you know, it's like the Aussie Chenin sort of vibe. Really cool. This here, pretty good. Yeah, do you mind? Uh, yeah, nah. it's a sim similar vibe, a bit waxy, a bit rich, a bit um, opulent, but yeah, um, I really quite liked it. it was, I was into it. I went with Fiano on this one as well, uh, I'll be honest, with a little bit of skin contact. But uh, I mean, there is Fiano in the Barossa, there's not that much though. Mm. Um, so it could well be. I was surprised just with the white. I was simply, yeah. But it kind of makes sense a little bit now. Not a fan? I'm sorry, one, bottle. one bottle, $38. <laughs> Rough. That's pretty clean. I, a bit yeah. mid, like 30 bucks and six. I was like, what's yeah, exactly what I said. You know, yeah. just like, yeah, fine. I'll have that pretty, pretty regularly. Don't need yeah. heaps of it though. Lucky. Yeah. Uh, this is the wonderful Frederick oh, Stevenson. Yeah. Uh, Rusan Masan. Mm. Uh, very cool. It's a hard show on this show, Rusan Masan, just in general. Yeah. And you're right, it is natty. Uh, yeah. And uh, we do love uh, Frederick Stevenson, Steve Crawford. Uh, and I think that also explains a bit of the price point because he's a guy that's pretty meticulous with uh, viticulture, yeah. uh, working with really, really great growers, but also just doesn't make that much. Um, yep. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic uh, winemaker. Uh, number three was wine and lineup for me. I love this. Absolutely love this. Mm. This was uh, super, super classy uh, orange wine. Very fun, very easy drinking, uh, but still got great complexity well, there as well. Now we know where this is. Do you have a guess at producer? No, I don't. I don't. I would Do say you? Yeti in the coconut. Or, or either. Or, or independently or together, or, yeah. or Bink. Yeah. One of the two dudes. Yeah, I had three for 38. I, I liked that a lot more than the previous one. I thought it was a much sort of like more approachable expression of that mm. sort of style mm. where it is more skin contacting, a little bit more natural, but it yeah. mm. smells good and tastes good, which is a nice uh, jumping off point for me. Um, so I had three for 38 though. Just I, had, uh, I had 12 for 38. Magic number. Let's go. It's Come on. Magic number. Lucky. Oh, of course it is. Of course it is. Tangerine, Tangerine Dream. Dream. One of the yeah, yeah, small fry. One of the OG uh, yeah. orange wines in Australia. Um, I believe this is a blend of a bunch of different things. Uh, but this is one of the wines when orange wine was kind of becoming a thing. This was one mm. of the ones that everyone was like, oh, I'll give it a crack with that because 100%. for $31, that is a dream. That's a really it's good It's a start. Tangerine Dream. Yeah, I love that. That's really cool. Yeah. Uh, wine at number four. So this, Sick. this is the red herring for me. This was where like I sniffed it and I was like, Pinot, okay, well, that, yeah. that takes away, I mean, it's not McLaren Val, where I was sort of like nudging towards because of the saltiness here. Yeah. Uh, and it can't be Barossa because it's Pinot. It was very thin on the palate. I was it's, like, it didn't have a lot of complexity on the palate. I, I, it's very sour, very mm. kind of like sour red currant kind yeah. of thing. Uh, there's a guy I reckon who makes a couple of wines like this. Uh, and we just Shobby? Him. No, oh, I don't think it's, oh, this could be Shobby. I don't, I don't think it's poolside, but it might be something else he's done. Um, I was thinking Bink, which he likes to play mm. with like a lot of early harvesting. And this could be, I think he's much around like, harvested Grenache, but or like actually, Zinfandel or something oh, like that. Right, like cool. he does early harvesting. So, Get a little weird. Yeah, he fit, this fits in his brief. I love this. I was uh, 12. For, I wrote down 50, and then I was like, no, I actually wouldn't pay $50 for this. I think it's I think it's probably going to be that, but you yeah, pay but I'd pay $24 yeah. for it. Yeah, great, yeah. exactly. I yeah, thought it was Gamma as well. Oh, yeah, cool. Lucky. Ross Gamma. Oh, cool. Gonzo. It has fruits. Uh, Sinso Grenache. Uh, we'll call that Gamma. Yeah, um, <laughs> what I meant to say was Pinotage. <laughs> uh, that's actually Pinot Noir, Grenache, and Cinso. Um, oh, sorry, a Pinot Noir and Cinso is Pinotage. Um, but close enough. Um, co wow. uh, farmed carbonic, co fermented Cinso, and Old Line Grenache. Um, yeah, not bad. Really good fun. Yeah, playful, natural fun gear. Uh, 2100 litres produced. So there's not much not of this going on. Uh, fun but yeah. wine, man. That's, I really that's like reinventing it. the Barossa in a really I like that pink cap, too. Yeah. It's cute. Yeah. 
Uh, one number five. Things, th these these are up there for me. I, I enjoyed these. Yep, these are good ones. Yeah, these I are good this. ones. I thought I this these. was a Grenache sort of thing. Yeah, I wanted yep. six bottles of it. I was going to spend thirty dollars on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it took a lot of. I'm so shocked that this is Barossa though. Like that was yeah, not yeah, even yeah. something that crossed my mind. Yeah, this is yeah. What everyone thinks about the Barossa, this is not it. This is not no, what they Barossa. Not it. The no. Barossa needs this as well. You know what's funny? When I was tasting them, I reckon I was like, you know what I can be sure of? This is one of those not heard of regions that not many people know about. <laughs> <laughs> it's the fucking Barossa. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Six, six for 30. Loved it. Half a dozen for 42. And I thought it was really, really good. I actually thought it was a, I think, I, went oh, G I forget what I called it. I went GSM. GSM. Yeah. Blendy, yeah. non-particular, mm. but... Yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's you, it's baby Bush. Baby Bush. Uh, yep. Uh, it's uh, Mavirdrum. I just well, I looked around just to see if anyone had any comments on the name Baby Bush. But uh, anyways, um, a section, a selection of Masal from the 1853 vineyard. We proudly, we proudly, proudly we. No, I really don't like this. Proudly we make this wine with no comma there. Proudly comma we make this wine with through through and there's a dash there. Through solar energy, water recycling, encouraging natural biodiversity, we bring out, there's a comma missing, uh, we bring out wine to your table, environmentally considerate and vegan friendly since 2006. They've, they've got this backwards, mate. They should be proudly we make this wine with a selection of our from the 1853 vineyard. It's like they're trying to be Yoda. <laughs> yeah, that doesn't, that doesn't good. Anyway, to the hey, look! I don't like the grammatical stuff that's going on with the bottle, yeah. but uh, the wine's pretty yummy. This was one line up for me. I really found. I I am big into this. We saw this in the previous week where it's like Syrah. That's got that lignified stem thing. Mm. That's got the the cedar tinder box tobacco y thing. I, I just, it tickles a part of my brain that I really love. Yeah, I got a dozen of this. I was into it. I had no idea what it was because it didn't, it just doesn't look like Shiraz and it doesn't no, feel it like Shiraz. Like Shiraz. This I thought might it was like be, a Murdoch do you reckon Hill this thing. might be like Eden Valley or like Flaxman Valley? Like one of those It's got to be altitude. Places. Like if that comes from Valley Floor, like guys, well done. Do more of that. It's probably uh, this fucking guy. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but I went three for 38 when I first tried it. Uh, 12 for 42. Uh, 12 for 40. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, wicked! This, oh, it is Flaxman Valley. So, this is Samantha Chandra. Um, she is working in the same, I believe, in the same winery as Callum Powell. So, similar oh. fruit profile. Um, cool. This is her second vintage. Um, I, <laughs> I actually purchased her first vintage. One of my dear friends, uh, Angela, designed the label, and we got in contact. And like, she was like, "Do you want to try and buy this wine?" I back it up. I have a bottle of the previous vintage and this vintage at home because I was late. I, so my, uh, the, I bought the wine. The wine uh, invoice got filtered through spam. And then I checked it six months later. I'm like, oh my fucking God, I'm so sorry. I just paid her now. And then the payment bounced back. And then she's like, hey, have you paid for the wine? <laughs> and then I forgot to pay. So uh, Samantha, I'm really sorry. Um, great wine. I've got a bottle of this already at home. And I've already got an, uh, one of the previous ones. She got the money. And I didn't get the wine for another nine months because I'm real bad. Dude, we bang on about people not paying their accounts all the fucking time. <laughs> and it's you. Freaking awesome Really, work. really cool. Yeah. Freaking awesome work. Yeah, so this is uh, absolutely someone to watch. Jeez. Absolutely somebody to watch. 900 bottles, or at least bottle yeah. 900. Yeah, there's not very much of this produced at all. Um, but yeah, it's cute. Super like cool, uh, doing some really good stuff. Um, but yeah, ripper, ripper. Between that and the Gonzo for me for one of the lineup, how'd you I'm really happy to give that one of the lineup. Yeah, he owes it one. Yeah, he does. <laughs> she got the money. Yeah. She got the money. She got the money, and yeah. I didn't get the wine until like nine months later. So, um, quick comment firstly on the brackets that we've been getting recently from Different Drop. Awesome. Yeah, really like cool. really interesting. The tickling parts of the brain that are for me are like really, really quite appealing. But I tell you what, like Barossa, like this, that's that's what we've been hoping for is this sort of vibrance, this yeah. sort of like retake, this like not just yeah. going, oh we're gonna hit hit it with more oak or just change the yeah. variety, but really sort of investing in their own varieties, doing it in their, you know, in their own way and a different way and fucking cracking wines. Yeah, that's good. Got some life in I'm really glad I tried that before I so I've got yeah, I've got two <laughs> bottles at home. That I'm, I, I'm gonna sit on that for a few years, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 well, 100%. Cool. Well, cool. till next week. Ciao. We'll be here. Bye.